Hi, I'm Amanda McCoy Flanagan. And I'm Jenny Oliva Smith. Welcome to Soul Rising. On this podcast, you will hear honest, off the cuff, vulnerable conversations about all things love, loss, and connection. Deep and meaningful conversations sure to pull at your heartstrings and enlighten your soul. Again, welcome. It's time to let your soul rise. Do you feel responsible for other people's happiness? Do you feel like you have to give an answer to react to a situation quickly? Are you behaving in ways that you know are not true to you, but you do it anyway to lessen anxiety either for yourself or for others around you? Do you feel pressure to keep the peace? What is up, my friends? Welcome back and welcome to episode 14. Yeah, what's up, guys? What's going on? Today, we're going to talk about uh, codependency. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. People may be very familiar with that term. Others maybe never heard it before. Or you might be like me, who you've heard it before, but you, in your mind, had it playing some other <laughs> definition and not one that, I don't know, explains you exactly. Maybe you're that person, too, because this definitely, as I shared with Amanda, as we were doing research and building upon this show, kind of... Um, Gave me a one to like punch in the face, like knock me on my ass. So mm. maybe you're that person too. I don't know. First, we just want to say thank you as always. Yes. Thank you for listening to our show. Yes. Speaking of, okay, I'm taking a stab at this. I'm taking go a stab it. at go this. For it, yeah. All right. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead right now and tell you guys I'm not fluent in Spanish. Okay. Well, let me um, explain why she's doing this first. So I got an email the other yes. day from uh, like podstatus.com. Somebody reached out and gave us some statistics on our yes. show. And apparently we're number 30 in relationships in Argentina. Yes! When, this was the coolest thing ever. And they were to... number 200-something in society and culture in Argentina. They yes. were like in the 170s in Canada for relationships. And Denmark. And Denmark. So yes. it's doing really well, especially in Argentina. Especially so in Argentina. We'd so, like to welcome you, our yes. Argentinian friends. That's Thank right. You. So check it out. Uh Muchísimas gracias a nuestros amigos de Argentina. Descubrimos que soy más los que nos escuchan que en cualquier otro lugar del planeta. Los amamos y apreciamos mucho a todos y esto acaba de hacer nuestro año completo. Te amamos Argentina y nos encanta tenerte en este viaje. Con nosotros. Yes. Okay. I probably really have that all up. So what it says is it's a huge thank you to our friends in Argentina. We found out that there are more of you listening to us than anywhere else on the planet. We love and appreciate you all so much. And this just made our whole year. We love you, Argentina. And love having you on this journey with us. I'm sure that was all left up. So, hey, listen, but we love you guys. We love you. What's up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that was cool. awesome, Jenny. I love that. I think I could listen to you speak Spanish all day long. You it's have in there. You a beautiful voice. You know that I spoke Spanish before I did English? Did I tell you that? My no, father's fluent. Yeah, your father. My grandmother, my aunts and uncles, everybody was fluent maybe on mm -hmm. the bucket list to be like com back to conversational Spanish. That's, yeah. But that's super cool, guys. Thank you so much for Thank listening to us all so over the much. world, wherever you are. I have this idea in my head that we're talking mainly to Americans, but we're not. And no. that is so cool. It is the coolest thing ever. And I'm like, in fact, Americans, y'all are slacking. Thanks, friends. No, yes, step it up. Come on. Argentina's got you guys like, come on. Yeah, when we heard that, it was just, it was so cool to hear. We love you guys. And again, we, we hope to keep connecting with you. And get to know more about yeah. all of you in Argentina. And more importantly, this is a worldwide. We talk a lot about stuff going on on the planet, right? Yes. The stuff that we talk human about. Human condition. Isn't, yeah, the human condition. Emotion doesn't apply to just Americans. No. Like, we're all going through the same stuff right now because yes. the energy is on the planet. It's not yep. just American energy. That is different, I guess, in different countries based on your right. society and the things that you're yeah, going. Yeah, culture. I'm sure there are the different cultures, things culturally. But 100%. But clearly you guys underneath yeah. it all, it's that basic universal connection of, of emotion that we all feel. Yeah, and it turns out, Argentina, you're just as effed up as we are. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of makes me Which is happy. why we love you. <laughs> Yeah, right. And I don't even mean us in the USA. I mean Amanda and myself. Yes, exactly. 
And if you're listening to us, you're probably, you know, yeah. going through the same symptoms. Yeah, that's my guess. Stuff. But like Jenny and I were talking about before the show, we have to be in pain and we have to oh. be feeling this stuff in yeah. order to heal it, right? I, I would not have gone mm. to this depths of, of healing if I was not alcoholic and had right. to do it to save my life. Exactly. And we know that we're all here now to like break these chains and to mm -hmm. heal this generational dysfunction. And I probably would not be willing to do this. If I wasn't in pain. So I'm right. a big proponent of pain. I'm a big proponent of suffering. Yeah. And I think that it's, you know, not to I'm stay in great, it. It's great, Amanda. It's so awesome. So Don't like, you all want to be my best friend right now? If this is the first time you're listening to the show, please listen to some other shows first. We're not trying to torture you. But. Not at all. Not at all. I don't think you're meant to stay there. I, I know that it serves a purpose. <laughs> it needs to be looked at. I think we spend so much time running from it. So yes. I'm an advocate of going into it and then coming out. It, the right person and you're 100 percent correct with that and i think that we're either going to do two things we either run from it or we use it as the gasoline to run towards a better version of ourselves mm -hmm. and it just feels like that's been the theme um of the entire last year at least for myself anyway and this particular subject yeah it kind of messed me all up <laughs> so <laughs> in a good way so, sorry about that. This was your idea. It was my idea. Sorry. Oh, I did it. Of course I did. <laughs> yeah, because I found out that I don't know how to listen to my own needs. So clearly my inner, my higher self was like, hey, hey you, hi, it's me. You know, me, you haven't listened to it in a long time. Let's look at this show. Yeah. Because it yeah. turns out it was huge for us to, yep. to start digging yeah. into Yeah, I'm this. going through a book right now with my sponsor in recovery, and it's called Codependent No More. Okay. So this, that's like the Bible of codependency. I've been listening to different things for about a week. Mm -hmm. And it was her name? Melody Beatty. Yes. So, yeah, it was kind of mind-blowing because everyone from all different aspects, everybody mentioned her name and this book. So mm -hmm. please tell yes. us. She's like tell us. the mother the mother of this. So yeah. I'm going through it with my sponsor right now, and it was pretty mind-blowing, especially when, and then we'll get to it, but like all the bullet points that identify a codependent person mm -hmm. under specific categories, codependency shows up as caretaking, mm -hmm. as low self-worth, as repression of our uh, emotion, as obsession, uh, as yes. controlling, denial. As controlling? Yes, that we control our surroundings to try and change other people's behaviors so that I am affected differently. Oh, we're going to get into all this. Let me just tell you the definition first. Yeah, okay? start so with that. We're going to talk about it. We're going to mm -hmm. tell you how it shows up in our lives. Maybe it's how it shows up in your lives. Mm -hmm. And then we're also going to leave you with some steps that you can take to move out of it. So the definition in Melody Beattie's book, Codependent No More, mm -hmm. it's actually not her definition. She takes it from a author named Robert Stubby. And from his book, it's called Codependency, an Emerging Issue. Oh, his definition is an emotional, psychological and behavioral condition that develops as a result of an individual's prolonged exposure to and practice of a set of oppressive rules. Mm. Rules which prevent the open expression of feeling, as well as direct discussion of personal and interpersonal problems. Hmm. If you're a victim of sexual abuse, physical oh, abuse, yeah. any kind of abuse, emotional abuse, which we don't really talk a lot about emotional abuse, no. it's like kind of a new thing, and ne neglect, neglect, abandonment, that and abandonment. I don't know if you guys are anything like me in the sense that I always had this in my when I hear the word codependent, in my mind that is like I would think of um, like high school relationship, like you know I had my friend who was maybe with somebody who she couldn't break it off with and she couldn't. She couldn't go to lunch by herself because she was so codependent on her boyfriend. In my mind, it was like codependent meant to me you couldn't be alone or that you couldn't do things without depending on someone else in order to do them. That's mm -hmm. always been my concept mm -hmm. of what codependence is. And yeah, no. It's really not. It's, that's no. really not. And I think a lot of us think it's the opposite of mm -hmm. independent. Yes. But it's not the opposite of no. independence because you could still feel like you're independent in some of your choices and in mm -hmm. your thinking and you can live alone. You can be yeah. alone. You're fine to be independent, but you can still be codependent. So independence and codependence yeah. can exist at, at the, the same, same time. time. Yeah, they are the whole idea the part that we can be dependent upon is in a matter of having to, like you were started mentioning, making the environment and everybody around us okay, even at, like in a very young age, even in infancy. Infancy, that inside of us, we internally 
can sense probably you know we're living beings i'm sure a lot of animals can do this too mm -hmm. so if you're a year old even or whatever 18 months there's a part of you out of survival that knows if one of your parents is not stable oh there's yeah. a part of us that sense it out of survival so if you had an alcoholic mom like you said or an addict parent, yeah or whatever. i don't know if i said that but children of alcoholics definitely. yes or even just mentally not yeah. well if they're bipolar yes. and untreated yeah. whatever the situation not consistent right like if you're a baby and you're getting mm -hmm. fed every like three hours but then all of a sudden you're hungry for an extra hour like you know somewhere in there well, there's just something innate in us that knows that the human being that's like in charge of keeping you alive is not running on all cylinders. Yeah. There's a part that starts to sense that. And if you're going through that for a long period of time, starting from infancy, even though consciously you may not even remember, you start developing these characteristics, almost like you have to hold the person up because they're holding the roof up that mm -hmm. you're surviving under. There's a term it's called parentified or parentification. See, this tells me I need to a lot of people who suffer with codependency were mm -hmm. raised in a situation where they had to take care of their parents' emotional and probably physical needs as well. Yeah. And that happens a lot with alcoholic or mentally ill parents. Mm -hmm. What it comes down to is you were raised in a stressful environment mm -hmm. where there was an uncertainty of living. Your expectations yeah. were never satisfied. You didn't know what you didn't what know the, if you were gonna survive was coming. Correct. You so your know. basic instincts of survival which causes us and and I had heard a bunch of this and they were saying that like much like addiction, which also really blew my mind, that it progresses and gets worse throughout your life, which I have an understanding of that from being somebody's recovering alcoholic and knowing alcoholism and how it progresses, but to hear that this particular set of um behaviors and characteristics actually does the same thing mm -hmm. toss me on my head yeah. yeah you know just just to be clear this is not a mental illness this no. is not something that you're born with this no. is not, it, not even something like a, a personality disorder which is something that develops because of an unstable home about environment or trauma or whatever it's not it's not that and so it's easily curable treated yes. yeah like you this is it's very hopeful. Like you do not extremely live like this mm. anymore. But I think, you know, knowledge is power. And I think being Big aware time. and being honest with yourself about the behaviors and why you're doing them. Right. We yeah. tell ourselves all these stories. All these stories. To justify. Yeah. Oh no, but they need me. Oh, but if not for me, then who's gonna do it? Exactly. Or, you but know. Coming to find out that because of the environment maybe not being consistent or your innate survival skills being there the need for safety squashes everything else regarding personal needs yes. and it makes having healthy relationships very difficult if you're someone who's done this because again and we've used this word before but that self-abandon concept mm -hmm. you know i think you don't even know how to know what your needs are we don't even clock in and i'm saying we because i've come to realize i already had a pretty good idea but after trying to research in this show, I am 150% clear now that I absolutely suffer from codependency. I mean, to the point I was like, I'm scheduling a therapy appointment, mm -hmm. like after all of this, because it was very eye opening for me to hear a lot of what I was hearing and look back like I feel like I'm probably getting better. But looking back and knowing that a lot of these relationships are times in my life where I have constantly been in situations where I'm doing more for others than they are doing for me. Mm -hmm. What is this? And it, and it does come down to this self-worth thing because yes. it's like, I must not be, I'm not as good as, or I'm not worth the time or I'm, what I'm going through is not important enough that these people who I tend to feel like I'm always running to do whatever to make sure they're okay, no one does the same for me. That's all like almost we're setting that up in a way we're attracting people in our life. A hundred percent. That are not even capable of doing it. No. So seeking it. emotionally unavailable people. Yes. That's definitely a characteristic of this. Again, going back to control and trying to change other people's behaviors so that I am affected differently. That also relates to if I can act a certain way, mm -hmm. maybe you'll see me. Maybe you'll hear me. Maybe right. you'll acknowledge my needs or my existence and that will make me feel safe and that will make me feel loved and that will make me feel 
a shred of self-worth, right? right? Which we didn't have. So we're hustling. We're constantly, Brene Brown says, hustle for your worthiness. You know, that's like her, one of her lines. Hustle for your worthiness. Hustling for your worthiness. And codependency definitely falls under that, that characteristic of, of hustling. Holy crap, it trying does. to figure out, like, what can I say? What can I do? How can I be there? And try to be like, play like the chess board, right? Or be the yeah. puppet master. Right. And then if I do that, then they'll finally see me. And they'll yeah. love me. And they'll love me. So the part that I think has been really, really disorienting for me is realizing that it's not even so much that we look for those other people to fill our needs. It's almost like we're, because we're so disconnected from ourselves, from having to try to like, oh gosh, like you're saying, like keep everything cohesive and okay, that we're almost looking to people to tell us what we need in a way. Almost like because we're, we don't even know somebody who's suffering from codependency like this, we don't even know how to tap into what our needs are. No, there just we hasn't been time. Done it. There hasn't been time for you yeah. because you're constantly thinking about other people and how to meet their needs so that you'll get their approval. So, yes. So that you get their love. And ultimately, this whole people pleasing, right? That's uh, kind of what we're talking God. about. You know, a sense of so responsibility for yeah. somebody else's happiness and mm -hmm. somebody else's safety, being a fixer, you know, trying to create that sense of stability that you're talking about in yeah. order to lessen your anxiety and to lessen other people's anxiety or to keep mm -hmm. the peace. This is the kicker. This is the thing that I love about codependency that like blew my mind when I learned about it. God. We think we're doing things to help other people. To tell because, ourselves. Yes. <laughs> because they need us. Like if they didn't have me. Gosh, where would they be? They, yeah, exactly. And it makes it justifies our worth. To totally. We're useful. We're valuable mm -hmm. somehow. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, now everybody, hold, hold on to your hats because I'm about to blow your mind. Uh -oh. This is not about you filling somebody else's needs. This is about you feeling needed. This is about your need to be needed. Oh, geez. Yeah. And this is very true in parents, siblings, friends who try to, to help yeah. an alcoholic or an oh. addict in your life. Yeah. The enabling. That's what enabling is about. Mm -hmm. Enabling is about you doing something for somebody else, telling yourself that you're doing it because for they them. need you. They mm -hmm. might die or this or whatever. But really, you're keeping them dependent on you. Because it's making you feel needed. Ugh. So I'm sorry, everybody yeah, who's out it's there listening like, to that. It yeah, probably it's, sounds harsh and it, it probably but it's, hurts some feelings and it may have touched a sore spot. But it's but true. That's the truth. And it's the thing is, it's it's not because you're a bad person. No. It's be, at all. And that's the thing. And it's not No, you're a great person. You still want to help them. It's not that you don't want to help them at all, right? It's not mm -hmm. all about you. But there's a large part of that that is about you. Yeah. You have, like, we're, so some of the biggest heart people, and I suffer from this as well. Yeah. These huge hearts. Yes. And I felt like I was walking through, like, you know, a foggy room, really, and hearing some of this because I consider myself to be somebody who's very empathetic. I genuinely believe that I am. I really do. I genuinely believe that I'm somebody who loves people. I feel that that is definitely there. I love the fact that I mean, you could stick me in a room with people who like speak some other language. And for the most part, by the time I'm done, I'll find some way to connect with mm -hmm. them, which is why sales has always been something that I enjoyed. It was like natural to me. However, in looking at the parts of my life up to this point that have seemingly felt very painful or I have felt in this way that why is it that I if I'm sick, why am I not allowed to be sick? Why am I always jumping to go help everybody else? You know, what I mean, while I'm laying in bed and nobody gives a shit or you. Why is it that somebody else's needs are more important than what's going on with me? Even though in my mind, I've told myself before, like we teach people how to treat us. I tell my kids this all the time. We teach people how to treat us by how we treat ourselves, like all these things. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's so insightful. Meanwhile, I'm looking back at my history and at times when I have felt how I have felt and having to really differentiate and ask myself, which really was alarming and uncomfortable to be like, how much of this has been out of like you needing to survive? I know. Well, yeah, as you're degree. talking, I'm thinking about children who mm -hmm. we talked about were parentified. That was how you felt needed. That was how you got your self worth boost by taking care of your parents. 
yeah. either emotionally or physically, mentally, whatever, in, in, in any way. Right. So you're yeah. going to continue just doing that. That's the way that so you're everyone going around to you. seek that yes. self-worth. And again, I want to say when I, I was in therapy, when I was uh, moving and my mom was not happy that we were moving to Colorado. Mm -hmm. And I said to my therapist, you know, I just wanted to come with us. I just wanted to be happy. And she said, really? Or is this about you not wanting to feel guilty? And I was like, wow, yeah, like that, that was a codependent behavior to try and change the way she feels. Right. So they could be okay with this. So, but I was a little annoyed at that because I did it I strike a chord with you? Totally. Because I was like, wait a minute, but that does mm. not mean that I don't care about her. That does right. not discount. What I'm trying to say is that like, you could still, you still love these people. You are an empathetic person. Jane. Yeah. So am I. We feel like a lot for people. Oh, yeah. And we want to help people. Shit, I went to school to be social worker. Exactly. Right? Like what do they ask you the first days in social work school? What do you want to do? We all raise our hand. I want to help people. Exactly. Like that's just the thing. So and that is still gain in me. a sense of like feeling alive by helping. I love connection. to help people. It's connection. Yeah. So yes. one does not cancel out the other is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And that's good to hear because I literally was like, oh, am I like a closet piece of shit? Yeah. No. I'm all, hey, am I actually just self-serving all the time? And I I don't believe that that's the case, but it's, it's not certainly the case. causes me to really clearly have this vision of, of at times, whether it was in friendships, relationships, whatever it was, of having this sense of like, gosh, my feelings are so hurt because I do so much for them and I love them so much. Mm. Why don't I get yeah. the same thing from them? Yeah. 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 I remember cleaning up my friend's like vomit in high school. I may have told this story already, but like... <laughs> And, and we were all drinking. We, we were drunk. We were like 16. Our friend's oh, mother got days. us a hotel room. And uh, we had a... Like, Isn't that insane? Like 16. We to, and we had a, a, a bathtub full of beer. And yeah. we just got drunk was it prom in or the something? hotel. Her mom was in another room. I think okay. some of the moms were staying in another room. No, it was her 16th birthday. And somebody... And we got drunk and somebody threw up. And I literally was on my hands and knees cleaning it up. But I remember saying... You would never do this for me. None of you would ever do this for me. Oh. That is sheer codependency, like what you're talking about. Yes. Like, I wanted to prove so badly to those people that I would do that for you. Yep. Because I want them so badly to want to do that for me. Right? It's like this constant yes. trying to get this. You want to love. Get, and yes. You, because somebody again, to take care of me. And not that I wasn't taken care of. My parents right. were, were great. We had everything we needed. We didn't grow up in an abusive or an alcoholic home. Right. But I do yeah. believe some of my emotional needs were not met. Right. Um, and I just think that, like we talked about before, that our parents did the best with what they, the had. Tools they had. They were working with and yeah. their own unhealed pain and just, again, yeah, generational God. trauma and stuff that has been passed down through the years. Yeah. And now it's time for us, people who listen into our soul rising, yes, our soul is, rising is, soul is part of rising. that, is this breaking these chains, facing this stuff, getting very honest, right? Yeah. Now. The key to moving out of this is first it's awareness. Right. And then acceptance. Yeah. And, and being able to say, yes, this and is how not, I am. It's not easy, you guys, because listen, and as we're talking to you guys about it, I mean, literally in real time. I am going, anybody who's maybe having this like dawn on them, I'm literally in it right now. Like Amanda has had some time. She's aware and I'm so grateful because I will be picking her brain for many things about this. <laughs> I've, just had, I've just had more time in recovery. In I was just exposed to it earlier. Some of the things I'd heard too is that codependency is a subconscious program. You know, yeah. like where your parent, and, and the thing is, maybe you there. didn't even have an addict parent. Maybe they just emotionally were not regulated mm -hmm. was your mom losing her shit all the time because she was whatever her situation who knows what her parents went through to cause her to mm -hmm. be that and your father was out cheating and your mom was fucking losing her mind you know like all the the emotional the rage the anger the um, there's so many so 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 many ways instability and insecurity can yeah. present what, what one of the things that blew my mind is they were saying that when we grow up in this way though that you actually don't become self-actualized and self-individualized you're actually part of a paradigm so you don't have the opportunity mm -hmm. to even get to know who it is you are mm -hmm. because you're in this paradigm of like i've got to help keep everybody okay 
I got to keep everybody okay because then that means that I'll be okay. I'll, I'll literally my my immediate survival, food, mm-hmm. shelter mm-hmm. needs, and that's will. in there. We talk about that a lot. Yeah. I mean, like this childhood experiences, they are in your, the core of you. Everything, even if you're 85 years old, you know, and you haven't done this work. Yep, it's going to come out. It's going to manifest in ways in your life, ultimately because it's trying to get your attention. And it wants you to to heal. Like our souls, the main the main mission of our souls, our purpose here in this incarnation is to heal and grow and to evolve. Yeah. So it's going to keep presenting. And another way that it presents for me, and not so much anymore, but used to be a lot, was in the form of hypervigilance. Like I thought I was just very observant. And then I learned that that really was my hypervigilance because I needed to figure out the mood of the people around me. Oh, yeah. In order for me to know how to act. And are you, that's crazy. So you mean like you could walk, because I'm relating to exactly what you're saying. I could walk into a room and within probably two minutes have a very good idea of how the mood that everybody in that room is in. Yes, most and people. we think that we're conscious, right? We use those words. I'm yeah. observant. I'm, I'm conscious. Observant. Empathetic. I can feel fine. other people's energy. Yes. It might not always be that. It might be that you are being hyper vigilant because you're mm. so aware of mm-hmm. everything that's going on around you, all the gestures, the tone of voice, the movements, the mm-hmm. words coming out of people's mouth, because you're constantly looking to rearrange, readjust your own behavior. To change the energy in the room. Yet, or to just to be in control of it so that it doesn't spin out of control. And that comes from being traumatized in some way. Yep. And then if you said that it's going to spin out of control, then you need to take an action. Then do you need to, to do something. It. Yeah. So that you can then keep it. So, yeah, so hypervigilant, that's a huge one. But I also think it serves me. I'm really big on this whole, like, all these negative things, so to speak, these things that we think are not are not serving us. And they're not if they're not used rightly. I believe that there's always a way that it can uh, be flipped around and can serve us. A hundred percent. It's like probably some of my greatest, strongest qualities are the fact that I can walk in a room and find a way to relate or mm-hmm. have somebody feel safe to relate those are huge, huge assets to be able to, yes. that's part of why you and I are here. Yes. I mean, we're sitting here doing this show because My, yeah. of feeling other people's feelings and caring yeah. about how that's affected us and how it's how each of us is on this journey. So you're right. I mean, they're absolutely very positive things, but at the same time, we got to really take a look at and be honest, which this is the part that's painful slash eye-opening is how we've not done that with ourselves and how we ne- have not truly developed a sense of I even. I feel like even now, and I'm in my mid-40s, right? I feel like I'm closer. I know myself better than I ever have, but I've now come to realize I have been so far from even understanding what all my own needs are for so long. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even, I didn't even realize it. So yeah, and I think what results in that is a lot. We used to, we, I don't know if you've heard the word. I'm sure you have, Jenny, but I mean people out there listening. Um Enmeshment. That enmeshment. happens a lot. Families become enmeshed in this way because they feel this duty or this responsibility to get involved in mm-hmm. other people's lives and all the decisions that they're making. Mm-hmm. Then there's no boundaries. There's a lack of boundaries. Mm-hmm. And then it causes resentment because you're trying to control this one and you're trying to control that one. And it's because, again, it all goes back to this. Well, somebody, need, they need to hear it. They need to hear it. You know, like, I, I don't care if I'm brutally honest with you. I can't stand How many that. times have we heard Brutally honest. Thank you. You know, I don't save your burn. brutality. Really. Save your brutality for somebody yeah. who needs it. Exactly. But. We we have this idea that like, well, if we don't say it, then who else is? You know what? They don't need to hear it from you, right? What's that? Is it true? Is it kind? Is it necessary? Yeah, that whole a, thing? Yes. Ask oh, yourself and, those three questions. Is that the four agreements? No. No, that's a, I think it's a Buddhist thing. That's um, so, yeah. Ask yourself those three questions. When you feel like you need to interject and tell somebody else what they should be doing or how they can be doing it or whatever, even if you think it's coming from like this really kind hearted place inside right. of you, ask the yourself. Wisdom. Yeah. Is it true? Surprise. Is it kind? And usually those two, I could say yes. And is mm-hmm. it necessary? Again, does it need to be said? Does it need to be said by me? And does it need to be said right now? Right? Like yeah. these are some questions that you can ask yourself that can kind of put your codependent behaviors in check. Because if you're feeling like, hmm, you know what? I'm not really sure, mm-hmm. but I'm going to do it anyway. 
that's codependency. That's right. this like push, this like nudge of like, but I feel like I'm the one that has to do it because really something inside you is making you feel that if you could change that circumstance, right. then you're going to be okay. Then you're going to be safe. Mm-hmm. Then maybe whatever happened in your childhood is going to be undone and you can fix that. As yeah, you can fix yourself. Fix that. Well, that's the other part. I think that was a little just, I keep saying eye opening, but truthfully it is in order to recreate that same scenario that maybe we didn't have full safety in or we weren't having our needs necessarily met at that time we will attract people who will give us this exact result no matter how much we give to the relationship Mm -hmm. or the situation that we will be attracted to and attract and this is in all kinds of ways whether it be People to work for, bosses, people. Yeah, it's not just like romantic relationships. Yeah. We always think that it's a a friendship or a partner. Yeah. It's it's in every way. Yeah. And you do hear a lot of that a codependent person that they tend to go hand in hand with narcissists. Yeah. And a lot of people who are codependent had a narcissistic parent. Well, you just recreate what you were taught when you were little. So like that's what you spend your whole life doing, recreating really because your soul is trying to heal that part of you. So you got to recreate it to be again in enough pain at some point to say this isn't working for me. And then that's when the healing comes in is when you actually can change that and say, I'm going to break out of this system that I'm recreating for myself. And that speaks to the chaos part that I was talking about before. It's we create chaotic situations. All could become right. And waters can be smooth. You know, every now and then I'll look around, I'll say to myself, oh, God. all my relationships are doing pretty well right now. And then maybe like a couple days later, I'll feel like pissed off at somebody for something. <laughs> You're on that. Oh. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute. And oh, wait, it's fine. Like, why am I cre- I'm creating chaos so then I can come in and fix it to fix the chaos because your value has come in the fixing portion of yes. it not even in the understanding what the need was but in the action of the fixing the fixing you have found your identity it's something that is very eye-opening when i can take inventory and look back at how many times i, I felt soul crushed by someone like yeah why didn't i mean more to them like why didn't my feelings matter how could or, like, they do that to me how could they do this like, to me Aren't I deserving of somebody treating me better? And when you learn that from a very young age, you believe that you're not. You believe that you're not. Yeah. Or to sit and think that I haven't even had the 100% capability. I can feel anything from anyone in a room around me. But to know that I very likely have yet to actually know all of my own needs due to this Mm -hmm. is very jarring. Because with other people around me, I could figure it out pretty quickly like wow this person's hurting because of boom and i have people tell me all the time they're like you really are in the wrong field you should have been a therapist because you're a good listener and you can feel what's happening yeah all those things meanwhile i can sit here and honestly say to you guys i don't think i have known what my own needs are Mm -hmm. and i think it is probably a huge part of why alcohol was such a dear friend to me such a um steady relationship because it took me from myself even more so. Generally, I have metaphors. See, look at that. I'm even on a lot of metaphors. I don't even have metaphors. Oh, my God. Because I I don't know. There's In my mind, I've, I've been on this kick here lately, and I, I feel more aware of myself than I have been probably since we moved here to Colorado, really, and in my 40s. Mm-hmm. Like Amanda was saying, I just don't think of you like that. I feel like you make decisions yeah. for yourself. Yeah, I said that to her before the show we were talking about. And I was like, yeah. I don't really see you that, that way. way. You seem like you kind of run your own ship. Like you're good. Like yeah. you're not that, you know, controlled by other people's behavior. Right. And I think I'm in a much better and continuously evolving place about it. I think I hit 40 and it was like, thing, and also getting sober didn't hurt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. not real. Um of really getting a handle on in the last year and this hunt for my own authenticity, you guys. It's mattered to me because we've lost a lot of people in the last year, two years, three Mm. years since 2020. We've lost so many people untimely. I want to know who I am all the way through and through, not just the version that's like here to help take care of everybody else. Having a real awakening about understanding that I don't think I've 
but I don't think I've done the work to even know. I didn't even know this was as big of a thing for me as it is. And like we're talking about that we recreate the chaos. I think of my siblings who I love dearly and who will be listening to this. They're going to relate so much to this because talk about chaos. Like, I think my sister had made the comment a couple weeks ago, like, nothing can be easy. Why do we have to make things so Mm. difficult? To complicate everything so that somebody can come in and be the savior because we're all trying to be the ones to save the situation, to be that fixer, because then it's going to provide us with that sense of value. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And meanwhile, we're busy abandoning ourselves and we attract the people who cannot do it. So it's like we keep that, that whole thing about insanity, right? Doing the same thing over and over. This is such an addiction. Something different. It's such an addiction. This is such an addiction because I do believe you must be getting some kind of dopamine or some kind of chemical hit, right? We talk about this all the time about how like we're just driven by chemicals. Yes. And I think that maybe that's what it comes down to. Like if I get that hit of like, oh, I'm valuable. I fixed it. Look, she took my advice and she did what I told her to do. And now she's happy and everything worked out. That means I'm okay. That means I'm smart or I'm wise. Yes. And then she'll come back to me. Maybe she'll come back to me and ask me for more guidance and for more direction, yes. right? And then it feeds the ego. So it's definitely up there in the addiction world. They for go me. hand in hand, almost like stemming from the same branch, it feels like. Yeah. Um, you talk most most people know the term codependency mm-hmm. from the addiction world, from alcoholism. Mm-hmm. They say a lot of wives or husbands right. of alcoholics are codependent. So like we talked how codependents and narcissists attract each other. Mm-hmm. Codependents and addicts attract, attract each, each other, other because the codependent can save the alcoholic. Oh my God. Yeah. It's a big it's a big, big thing. Very pervasive. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it can be in plain sight, I think, is the part that's also been a bit baffling yeah. to me is yeah. that so commonplace. Yes. So commonplace in that some of those internal things for myself that I continue to say, why do I still feel broken? <laughs> what is it that I still feel broken about? Or why is it that I still feel this way? Or like I told Amanda before, there are times where I feel like, um, <laughs> and go figure, she has an amazing book. It's called Trust Yourself to Be All In. Okay. <laughs> I realize I have not trusted myself to be all in, bitches, at all. I've told Amanda, I've said it in a way that there's part of me that feels like I'm uh, a, a small part of me is not even here in the present moment all the time. Obviously, alcohol or whatever else, chaos could have made that possible. But I'm realizing a part of me, of my authentic self, that is probably still terrified to be here because of these behaviors, because of these things I've learned, because of these codependent characteristics that I have that I honestly did not really realize that I do at all. Yeah, you know, I found very interesting. So under all those of the, the ways that it shows up, like I said, yeah, tell me some the more about that. the low self-worth, the repression, also uh, dependency, being dependent on other people for your mm-hmm. happiness. That's part of it, of course. Poor communication, weak boundaries, lack of trust, <laughs> anger, and sex problems. And then underneath those were uh, like, 20 bullet points for each. And when I was reading my sponsor, we were just I'm like... I'm probably going to have to laughing. Like, we were like, holy cow. Did like, you feel like there was, was a picture of you there? You're like, where's my yeah, picture? Yeah. This shit's describing me to a T. There were some things that definitely still stuck out. A lot of them I could see in my well, past doing self. The mm-hmm. But one of them that I thought was very interesting was equates love with pain. Ooh. Now, if any of you have read my book out there, <laughs> dudes and do that. It's, it's what it's about. This is what it's about. And my sponsor Ooh. said, this is what you're trying to do with Jim. You're being codependent with Jim, who's my husband. Yes. Who, he has chronic respiratory illness from being uh, a firefighter and also a 9-11. Uh-huh. And every time he get he gets sick, I fall back into this fear of loss. And then my brain tells me that to be completely open and to feel complete love and connection is going to cause me pain. And it tells you, run for the hills. Yes. We don't want the pain. So I'm trying to control yeah. his illness. I'm trying to control the outcome of what might be coming down the pike. So Isn't even con- just con- yeah, just controlling life events is codependent. <laughs> trying to control things that are going on around me. Again, living in the uncertainty causes anxiety mm-hmm. for me. So I want to know. I want a sponsor told me once. She goes, you're not okay with things just hanging out there. Like, you need <laughs> things to be buttoned up. It's fascinating in why we are, like... Meant soul to be in each sisters. other's soul sisters and meant to be in each other's lives because S O L S O L sisters. Um, you said it's uncomfortable for you to not have things in order 
it's almost uncomfortable for me to have things in order. Well, that was interesting, too. A lot of the bullet points, they were completely contradictory. So, like, one would be like, yeah, having things in order, not having things in order. You know, so it's not, As it's they not explain, just like... It's not cookie cutter. No. Your codependent characteristics could be coming out in ways you literally had no idea that that's what it was stemming from. Exactly. There's this hope in me. I, I literally, you guys, I listen to a lot of really good people on YouTube. Um, I know now I need to get this, I need to read Codependent No More, which they all seem to talk about quite a bit. It's like at the basis of what so many people out there talking about codependency, they refer uh, to her work. First off, there was a weird level of shame at first because I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> like almost similarly at the time when someone's like, I think you have a drinking problem. And you're like, yeah, no, yeah, I don't. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Very familiar, very similar feeling. I felt like, wait a second. How could I have this going on and not know it? I had this because denial, like we say, is not just a river in Egypt. That's what I mean. Don't even know I am lying. Denial. Don't, I have a friend who loves. Don't the even acronym. know I am don't lying. Don't even know I am <sighs> lying to myself. Right. Jeez. I gotta love twelve step. So is it a twelve step thing? Uh, well, I that, that I heard in a meeting, but right, it did come from a meeting. But I, there was a part of me that really um, was uncomfortable in listening to this because I did not want to really admit that uh, a massive part of a lot of the pain I think I have felt in the past, in the sense of like abandonment or neglect or people wronging me has been my, at the core of it, not my own doing, not that I did it to myself, but because I've had this set of tools, like I was building a stage and it mm -hmm. was the same set every time. Mm -hmm. But I have been at the core of it and it's been because of suffering from some of these. Yeah. And the fourth step in recovery is looking at your resentments against people. Mm -hmm. And then, you you know, the first part of it is awesome because you get to just blame, blame, blame. They did this to me. This person did that. Blah, blah, blah. And yeah. then the second part is where you start to look at yourself. Yeah. And some of these things I said, well, how how on earth am I responsible for this? Like, well, I did not play a part right. in being sexually traumatized when I was five years old. That's right. Like, what, what the hell is like? No, you know. And what my sponsor said to me, your part is continuing to refeel it and relive it to and not do anything to heal it. Ooh. And that opened me up to the healing, right? Because if I'm sitting here with my heels dug in and saying, no, I didn't have a part in that. I didn't. I don't have any, any work to do around that. But, but I'm going to stay in that pain. I'm going to stay in that suffering. And you're going to justify why you need to keep drinking or keep doing what when for us. Killing myself. Right. Right. We have a justification. So it's basically developing a justification for why we're still abandoning ourselves. Exactly. That's the responsibility. And exactly. Because when I could take responsibility for the continuing to reliving and all that, I could say, I'm not going to abandon myself anymore. I'm going to take care of little Amanda. Instead of just blaming this person for doing this to you at that star. age. Wow. And I'm continuing to abandon myself by not acknowledging that I'm not allowing myself to heal. Does that make sense? Like It does make sense. It makes so much sense. So... This work is so worth doing, and it's going to be painful. Mm -hmm. But nothing, nothing good comes in life without a little bit of grit and mm -hmm. pain. That's how we grow. And tears. Like, any anything. Like, we talked about this, too. Like, working out in the gym. We talked about this, like, in another yeah. episode. Your muscles literally are breaking. They cheer sore because of the lactic acid or whatever, because your muscles are breaking down. Yeah. To rebuild into something else. It doesn't yeah. feel good. It doesn't feel good. So no. this is for you and then this is for other people as well. Because like when we opened up talking about how like you're not doing people any good by keeping them dependent on you. You are doing a disservice, mm -hmm. especially when we do this with our kids, especially doing everything yeah. for them. Right. Oh, but I'm going to be a bad mom if I don't make their bed every day. Or I'm going to be a bad mom if I, you know, send them to school mm -hmm. with whatever, like not not a homemade lunch or, um, you know, yeah. all this stuff of like to take this this caretaking of, of, our, of our children or mm -hmm. keeping them dependent is meeting our needs to continue feeling like a good mom. And you're doing them mm -hmm. a disservice because you're not teaching them how to be independent, how to how think to for themselves, how to make a freaking sandwich. <laughs> right. Exactly. Your kids most likely. Are yeah. capable of doing a lot more oh, yeah. for themselves than you allow them to think do. they can or allow them to because you like the fact that they need you. Mm -hmm. And that, 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 you know, it's not okay. I'm like keeping my kids stifled. Yeah. But I'm keeping my kids in this place to like need me. Mm -hmm. And it's, 
you're not being a good mom. I'm not being a good mom when I do By that. By doing that. And I do it too. Sure. Listen, I'm calling myself out. I'm not saying yeah. I'm mother of the year over here, you know, like <laughs> my mom always loves to say that. I wasn't mother of the year. None of us are mother of the year. <laughs> None of us. Okay. We all None make a ton us. of mistakes. Yeah. And I find well, myself done. doing it. I catch myself and still do it. Sometimes yeah. I cannot override that need to feel like a good mom. Right. And the other part, for those of you out there, and it might be a little bit more common, right? If you're in a relationship where you're like, well, he's just still, he still doesn't even take the time to like tell me that I look nice or, you know, it doesn't matter for him to plan dates for me or she doesn't tell me, you know, that she really appreciates how hard I worked or I have this friend and it just sucks because you know what? I'm always, every time it's someone's birthday, I'm always doing things for people and no one does anything for me. These friendships where we're baffled by the fact that people aren't reflecting back to us what we feel we're putting in. Mm -hmm. It's so worth taking the time to look at if you are actually in these situations due to your own attracting the situations because if we can become aware of these things that's happening to me in real time as we speak, there's hope. Yeah. There's hope for a more solid, authentic, uh, satisfying existence and, yes. and peaceful balanced relationships you know there are people and um i don't know if i do it too much i probably do but i know there are people friends of mine who would say like i'm always doing for them and they're never doing for me so yeah. i'm going to break off this relationship because it's not balanced it's not right. fair i give 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 and i don't get anything in return right okay. maybe you're giving too much maybe yeah. that other person who's not constantly giving back is in a healthy place, but like if they're not willing to get out of bed at 2 a.m. in the morning and come to your aid, but you are, maybe that says something more about you and your codependency and that's than exactly. about them and their lack of being a good friend. That's exactly what I'm saying, that if you're out there, or you're driving in your car right now or you're wherever you are and you're thinking like, I know exactly what this person's talking about because I'm in this friendship right now where this person seems to be, they don't give a shit about when I'm going through things, but I'm always there to take all their freaking phone calls, whatever it is. You might want to stop, take a breath, and take recognition of the fact that you might have been ignoring what you need this whole time and not because you're a bad person, because you are suffering from some of these characteristics of having codependency issues that you have ignored yourself. So then when we're looking, and I, again, well, there's the metaphor. There it is. Yeah. The same way that like. Bring it on. Yeah. And it's one I've used before, but it's like you have cancer and you're going to the podiatrist and you're mm -hmm. like, hey, mister, like, help me get rid of this cancer. You're looking to the wrong source mm -hmm. to solve the wound. You're your own source. You're the source. You're the yes. source. And you're looking outside of you to continually be like, God, why am I not worthy enough to know that when we can start realizing that we are, there's hope and there's a resolution at the other side of this, but it has everything to do with knowing that we haven't been able to know our own needs even. Yeah. And 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 you're not at fault for that. No. Our child, you're at the mercy you we were trying to survive. Of your parents. You were totally so trying to survive. you did not create this. No. This is not something that you should feel bad or guilty about. Uh -uh. But you do have a responsibility now mm -hmm. that you are aware and that you're exposed to it. And that, like Jenny said, should be extremely hopeful and exciting so for you. It is. And to it say, is. wow, I actually have the control to, to stop feeling like I've I'm never not, been enough. Yeah, like I'm not enough. Like I've never been wanted. Like my life has not mattered enough to anyone else the way that they've mattered to me. And the truth is, you have to take no care else. of you. You have to want yourself. You have to like yourself. We talk about self-love all the time, but there's mm -hmm. so many other things that go along with that. It's not just, you have to actually like yourself. You have yeah. to want to be around yourself. yourself yeah. You have to really make best friends with yourself. Yeah. And take care of your own needs. Your own needs. That's that whole, right, put the oxygen mask on, yes. bop, bop, before yes. you help somebody else. Yes. Like, like, it's so true. We've been saying this stuff for so long. Mm -hmm. This is why we're here, because yep. we're, we're, we don't feel defeated, and we don't feel powerless, and we feel that if you're listening to us too, neither do you, and that you exactly. still have hope. Yeah, you there's still, always hope. Yep. And that you know that there's hope. a way out, that there is a way out of, of the suffering. Yeah, <laughs> and that this mystery, some of these mystery things, and I guess that's what it is for me. There's just been these lurking things hiding in the corners that I feel like I've never been able to quite pinpoint. I feel like I've gotten through and mm -hmm. found ways to find some healthy outlets and heal from a lot of difficult things. However, 
when I started learning about this, I was able to pinpoint some of those things. And they were kind of the mystery box of why I'm still all effed up, right? Mm -hmm. What I want to read to you guys right now is, yeah, please. is, is what is on, waiting for you on the other side. Oh, please. I do need to hear this. Of this. Okay. So we have something in recovery we call the promises. And we yes, read it at the end of every right. meeting. Yes. And it's basically what will come to you if you do the work in mm -hmm. recovery. This is what will come to you if you do your work in codependent recovery. You recover from your codependency. Let's hear it. Lay it on me. It is liberating. It lets us be who we are. It lets other people be who they are. It helps us own our God-given power to think, feel, and act. It feels good. It brings peace. It enables us to love ourselves and others. It allows us to receive love, some of the good stuff we've all been looking for. It provides an optimum environment for the people around us to get and stay healthy. And recovery helps stop the unbearable pain many of us have been living with. Wow. Amen. Amen, man. That is... It's not really prayer. I it's not it. a prayer, but amen sounds about right. It's it's incredibly hopeful. So why don't we get on to the challenge? Yeah, let's do it. Um, so what I came up with was um, when you feel yourself falling into codependent behavior, either of your own making, mm -hmm. your own chaos making in order to fix it, mm -hmm. or coming from somebody else, do not react. Sometimes we say, don't react, respond. Don't do any of it. Just sit with it. You do you mean not... like if someone's all, oh my God, it's so, yeah. this guy, like they call you and you're ready to do the whole, like jump something. right into action. Yeah. Be I'm, I gotta, I'm gonna go. I gotta be there. I gotta get my car. I gotta get my keys. I gotta go. I'm gonna come get you. Don't do it. Just sit there. See how long you can sit in that anxiety for because it's probably going to create some anxiety. Yeah. Right? And then we talk a lot about creating a new story, creating a new mantra. While you're mm -hmm. sitting in that and it's eating you alive, it's not my job to save them. This is going to be more about me than them. Mm -hmm. I am teaching them how to take care of themselves by letting them be, mm -hmm. by not coming to their rescue, by mm -hmm. not being their savior. The Al-Anon program, they talk about do not engage do not engage. So, like, say if somebody tried to rally you up, like somebody calling you out, did you, did you hear what so and so oh, man. said? And da, 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 you know, just don't go there. Just don't engage with yeah. them. Don't try to make them feel better. Don't say whatever you think you need to say mm -hmm. so that they can, you know, calm down. Mm -hmm. It's not your job. Like, you do not owe anyone anything. Okay. And that I think is the message that was going through my head a lot when I was acting with my codependent behaviors was right. that I felt like I owed you and I had to act quick. I had to give you an answer. Right. Yeah. Yes or no. Or like right now. To, yeah. To prove to you that I'm taking action because I'm, I'm responsible worried. or yeah. I care or I love you or yeah. to prove something. Because I'm a great person. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm, I'm a really good person. Look how great I am. <laughs> Don't know if it detached with love. Detach with love. Mm -hmm. Remember, just because you're not running to their aid or you're not thinking of something to say to make the situation better or whatever, mm -hmm. you are allowed to detach and, and still, still be them. giving them love in other ways, sometimes from afar, mm -hmm. right? On your terms. On your terms. Yeah. Do not feel like you have to respond and react and go in and do do this because you're feeling this pressure from the, it's yourself, really. That it's really yours. It's more of an internal thing that's like, hey, we still need to feel our self-worth. So hurry, jump on this because that equals our self-worth or our identity. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is break that. Those things fire off in your mind like to stop it before it even goes. And, and tell yourself that that other person, what they think of me is not creating my sense of self-worth or my identity or my self-actualization. Take that time to create it for yourself. Who do I right. want to be? Who do I believe I am? Who mm -hmm. am I? I am love. I am kindness. I am compassion. Even if I'm not showing up in the way that that person is trying to get me to or show up for them. what they're used to me, I've been the person that shows up for them in this situation, in this way. This is the part I've played. Yes. It's almost like you're willingly. Watching. Yeah. Willingly. Mm. I've cast myself. Yes. I've cast myself as this character. Yes. That's yeah. a great point. And speaking about willingness, you have to be willing to have the dynamic change, you know, similar to mm -hmm. setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. It's the same deal. People aren't going to love it. Like, this is I'm an sure. Oh, no, 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 no. They're not. Right? They're going to want you to continue behaving in this way. And I think at the core of all that, once more, we're searching for it outside of us and other people ultimately to reach the goal of having it for ourselves mm -hmm. it's different you're not depending on people outside of you or depending on some source outside of you to provide it if we figure out or we can even listen just even trust ourselves enough to go what are my needs 
It's, Write them down. Yeah. Right? It might be so liberating, like they said, and eye-opening, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And by you serving your own needs, you got to allow people to be mad at you. Let mm. them be mad. That's a great Let point. Let them be mad. I feel but, like we have a hard time with I, I have a hard time. I have a hard time, time with that. Really hard time. I might come off sounding all, like, confident and do this and do that. It's just but, like, I don't like that. I get, like... Torn up for days when somebody's close mad at to you. Me. See, I would never think that. Just like you, I would never think that. I would think it's certain people. You're such a badass bitch. Like she's such a badass New York chick that she doesn't care. Oh, no, I do. She cares. I do. I care. I care a lot. So don't let my badass New Yorkness fool you, people. I'm just. I'm you right be, with you. I'm in the yeah. boat, rowing along with you. We all are. Certain people in my life have really. It really. It hurts. Tears you. me up when uh, I think they're mad at me. You feel like still. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple, there's a couple people, but I don't act on it anymore. That's the growth. That's the difference. I allow that fear to exist without behaving differently. I stay true to myself. Mm-hmm. I don't abandon myself anymore. Mm-hmm. That's the growth. That's it's huge. The growth. It's huge. So, do you have anything to add to that? Do you have any other challenge? I mean, example? I feel like I myself am going to be taking this challenge because it's so necessary. But also, yeah, you guys maybe pick up some of these. Books. Um, Melody Beatty, is that her name? Yeah, Mel- Beatty. I'll put it in the notes. B E A T T I E. Yeah, Beattie, Codependent, Beattie, Codependent no, more. no More. And she also has a daily reader. It's called The Language of Letting Go. Mm-hmm. And that's awesome. And I've had that book for years. And every couple of years, I'll pick it up mm-hmm. and it still blows my mind. And mm-hmm. it's like, oh my gosh, like that's the complete opposite of what I thought my entire life, of what I'm allowed to do, how I can behave, how just the story that I've been telling myself for so many years is so wrong. Yes. I think the other part, you guys, if you're on the fence about, and I know it's not easy, and depending on what country you're in, I know in the United States, it's not exactly the easiest to get mental health met right now. It Mm -hmm. really sucks. It's a problem. Yeah, it's terrible. Um, But if you have benefits that cover it, and if you're somebody who's on the fence about jumping back into therapy, I would say do it. That's been me and this particular subject. And also because I'm wanting to be able to help my own kids and my children. Mm -hmm. And I want to be a cycle breaker and all those things. And don't be codependent with your therapist. If you go to therapy and you give he or she or they a couple of sessions, maybe two or three sessions, and you're not feeling it. Yeah. Trust yourself to go somewhere else. Go somewhere else. Great point. Great point. You deserve to have somebody who you feel comfortable with, who yeah. you trust, yep. and who you respect their wisdom. Mm-hmm. You are allowed. Yeah, absolutely. And then just be gentle with yourselves, man. All of you guys, everybody out there, no matter what it is you're going through, just remember to be gentle with yourselves. We all need it. We need to be compassionate with one another. And we can't get to that point unless we're compassionate with ourselves. So, like, be easy on yourself this week, today. Give yourself some love, some props, because you're still here. Yes, balance this work with a lot of self-love and Mm self-care. You don't need to be, you know, treading in the deep end of the pool Mm -mm. every day, all day. Like, yeah, that's exactly. Dip a tell when go in a little bit, come out, then go in. I interval train is what I, I like to look at. My my thing. There's interval training. If you're a runner or an exerciser or whatever, you know about interval training. You do you go fast and then you go a little slower. Then yeah, you go fast and you go slower. It's so true. And also, just like take some time to ask yourself what's going to bring you some joy, and if that means listening to music or if it means sitting down and writing and giving yourself ten minutes to do so. Like slow down long enough to remember or try to ask yourself what is it that's going to like spark some joy what are my needs what are my needs today Mm because i'm here to tell you like i know for sure i haven't done this enough and i know i want to and i'm glad you guys are here to listen to me do it all of us together we're doing it together you're not alone you're not alone we're so glad you're here yes we're so grateful that you've chose to listen to us today and that mm-hmm. you keep coming back to our show. We are extremely grateful. We are honored. And it is our pleasure to uh, sit here and babble and have you Yeah, listened. I try to speak <laughs> Spanish. Hey, I'm sure I botched that. I hope you guys got at least part of it. I, it sounded great to me. Right? I was babbling a bunch of bullshit. Amal, your purple <laughs> underwear smell of lilacs. <laughs> Things that big with us. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We're going to head out. I want to give you a little bit of housekeeping. Um, so yeah. this is episode 14. We're going to do two more. They're going to launch into season two. Yes, I can't believe it. And some exciting news. We're going to have guests on the show. Yes. But Ginny and I have gotten a lot of feedback from people that you love our chemistry and you love yes. what we got going on here. So I am hesitant to... Uh, <laughs> 
let go of that. Yes, I get it, which is why we're going to hang on to it, though. We're just going to mayonnaise. To yes. Mayo. Yes. Mayo to so sandwich. some days we're going to have mayo. We talked, Jenny, I don't know if you listened to that episode, guys. She talked about having guests. It's like adding mayo to the sandwich. Some days we're going to go straight no, no mayo. mayo. Like, and we're just going to be like, you know, turkey and lettuce. Mm-hmm. And then maybe two weeks later, we'll have a guest. But we're not going to be like so hard and fast to it. Right. We're going to just kind of see what feels right for, exactly. for us and try to tap into what you guys need. And tell us, too. Shoot us an email. Soulrisingpodcast at gmail.com. Soulrisingpodcast at gmail.com. Tell mm-hmm. us what you want. Do you want guests? Yeah. Do you like just us, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we're here to serve you. We exactly. want to know what you guys want and need from this show. So Because we're codependent. Because we're about to draw this <laughs> Mm. But, oh yeah but no really but so we good. really we so really good. are here we're here we're in it together you guys yes can't do it without you we so we rise together that. yes we love you we love you we hope you have, have an amazing day. week okay love you bye. bye if this podcast resonates with you and you want to dive deeper check out my blog get real all in on love loss and connection at amanda mccoy flanagan.com that's mccoy with a k You can also follow me on Instagram at Amanda McCoy Flanagan. See you next time. Until then, let that soul rise.